today I'm going to be talking about Barber Retail 101. If you don't take the service of retail seriously, we're cheating ourselves. Retail is an extension of my customer service as a barber. And, and you got to say that to yourself over and over. Retail is an extension of my service as a barber. A little bit about my uh, history, if you look on that page. The most important thing I want y'all to remember about uh, me career-wise was uh, mentorship. It impacted me and it set the trajectory of my life and career. I got to college in 1986. I was a freshman in the dorm at Norfolk State. And, and here's where mentorship came into the picture. I was cutting hair in the dorm and a young cat named Junius Thompson had a barbershop across the street from Norfolk State University. And he heard there's this kid on the second floor cut all your clients. He came looking for me. Mentorship, a lot of times, uh, you know, we, we tend to look for a mentor, but if you're, if you're passionate and you're doing the work, the work of self-image, I was helping people have better self images and I wasn't even licensed. That, they sat in my chair, they felt better, they paid me $3 for a haircut. That's how much I was getting. And I was killing them. I, my dorm sat right by the phone. So people were looking at me and I I was getting it with a pair of broke up walls, just lining them up. So June comes, he said, hey man, how much are you getting? I was like, I get $3 a cut. And I'm 17, by the he said, man, look, give me that $3 and you keep five because I charge eight at my barbershop and you are going to be a black man with a business. Ain't that why you came in Norfolk State? Yeah, that's what I mean, you know. He, he instantly gave me purpose with a passion that I had. I didn't, I didn't even know I could be a boy. I didn't even know I had a career. I had a mentorship, like doing the work will open that door. Listening, inspecting the skin, the hair, the beard, discussing, talking, listening, consulting, maintenance, shampooing, conditioning. These are all in my in my mind, the top ten, of course sanitation and all that, but that has that's not what you actually do with your client. You don't sanitize your clients, you know what I'm saying? So these services are where you engage your client. Of course, we cut, we style, we enhance. <clears throat> One very important ball that I dropped for years was recommendation. I didn't, I didn't recommend anything. My first, I mean, my first 15 years, to be honest, it was about me. It wasn't about the client. It was about how much I could do and how fast I could do it. I was so happy I knew how to yield a raisin. I was so happy I could, I had stop. I was so happy that I, I had something to offer that I didn't really engage what they needed. So recommendations, that is a powerful asset that we have as partners. Now, you flip it, uh, when I recommend, like that power that we have of recommendation, when I recommend, I present something or someone as worthy of mention, or I show confidence in something. Your confidence as a barber, your confidence as a stylist is almost as important as your ability. When you recommend, when you say something, it means you might say it about, yo, man, I wouldn't do that if I, yo, I, you know, girl, you should, you know. Those things resonate, they stick, whether you think it or not, it means something. If you don't have a professional answer, you're dropping the ball. So, when I recommend, I take it seriously. And I, I want that to be something that we think about. When we open our mouth to recommend, it's important. So, customers come to you, right? They come to you because they need something, they want something, they desire something. I'll say this to y'all, I didn't say it in the beginning, I started a product line called Schwartz. 
And the reason that I started Schwax, and Schwax is just uh, shea butter and jojoba wax. Schwax. That, that's really all that it meant. But the reason that I created the product is because I had two clients. I, and I've had, I've cut hair in Georgia since 93. I have lots of clients. But two clients in particular had beards that were so rough and dry that I did not want to touch them. That was just the honest to God truth. I, I, I serve them to this day. And the reason that I, I was forced to get better at product recognition, product um, understanding, was because their beards were so rough, dry, there was nothing that I, I was mixing noxema with shaving cream and, you know, I just, I, I just, when they came in the door, my continents changed because I'm like, I gotta deal with this again. Like, how do I, and that inspired me, right? So your customers have needs, each and every last one of them. They have a need for products, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether it's shampoo, whether it's condition, whether it's some sort of styling name, whether it's some sort of oil, they're, they're doing it anyway, and it just may or may not be working out for them, you know, but the truth is they need product. Needs are real simple. They need a haircut. They need some sort of grooming service. They need the beard trim. They, they need a simple service. They want, they want a fade. They want a fro. They want a tint. They want, they want, you know, they want to look like something they saw on the TV or something like that. But what I, I, I think is important to understand about clients is their desire. Their desire. When you show them that mirror, what I believe they desire most is they want to keep that look, that thing that you, that feeling that you show them when they cut is it's fresh. It's not going to be any fresher than that. It's not going to get any better than that. They want that to last as long as possible. One of the problems that I developed as a bar, and it's a problem, is that I forgot to connect with the experience that I give. I do it so much. It's a lot of people out there who are professionals and have license and who are working, but they're not providing that. And, and to the detriment of themselves and to the industry, we're feeling it. Um, if, if you look at the next page, defining our customer's experience. The power of products and the service of retail. Retail products is a service, okay? It empowers us to further define our customer's experience. Our customers demand it. They demand an experience. That's why they come to you. That's why they, they sit in your chair and let you do all that work and then they pay you. We can get so used to giving magic away, we forget it's magic. It's powerful. They feel, they feel so good at that one moment. Do it so much, it's not magical anymore. You know? We got we to gotta get in tune with the fact that our service is powerful. Our word is powerful. It resonates. It sticks. So we got to get in tune with that again. That's an important step. Needs, wants, desires. Our clients have them. And we got we to gotta feed that. We got we to gotta get in tune with that again. What is your mission as a profession. What is your mission? I know mine. Build healthier self-images through the art and science of natural hair. That's my mission. That, that, I've been on that mission for a long time. I didn't even know. I didn't even know how to articulate it. What's your mission? If you don't have one, you need to get one. You know? It's, it's, it's your business. You are, you are in business. Businesses have mission statements. They have to. Or else they don't have a mission. They don't have a purpose. They don't have a direction. It's like a business plan. Like, let's, if, you're, if you're on a football team and you don't have a playbook, 
What do you have? I'm just floating. That mission statement should be your mantra, your mantra, your, it should be what moves you. So, so, what is your mission? Mission is important. Have that. Have that as, I don't put it on your business card, put it on your website, put it in your mind, put it on your IG, whatever it is, you do have to define it. You have to. Because it's going to help you. It will show you where you're going. Nowadays, there is a lot of natural, plant-based alternatives for a lot of those products, a lot of those ingredients. And as I never called myself a natural hair care provider, but that's what I've done my whole career. So I had to re-educate myself on ingredients. So here are a list of customers' possible needs. Here are some of the ingredients in their topics like surfactants, conditioning agents, emulsifiers, emollients, humectors, moisturizers. Vitamins, the rock, silicones, all of all of these, all of these different categories should be something that we are familiar with. Barbering is art and it's science, but all I'm focused on right now is the art. I'm, it's a whole nother component. So defining our customer's experience has to be more than just art. It's gotta be science. Water is science. The pH of water is seven. It's neutral. It's right down the middle. If we're not incorporating water in what we do, we're missing it. Our customer's scalp is a five and a half on the pH scale. It's a little bit more acidic. When we when we put shampoo in their hair and water, we're at eight nine on the pH scale. When we add conditioner, we're three four. We we're we're we're, we're chemists. We're scientists. We're experimenting, or are we not? Are we not? Are we, are we missing that? It is, it is the reality of a barber and a cosmetologist. As a barber, myself, I have been forced to be concerned with women in their hair. I have women who come to me because they want to fade, but they at the top a little bit longer. They, they, they still use an iron, they still use a blow dryer, they still have things that they, but they like to take. So I have to engage that, I have to be I have to teach myself. I have clients who want their hair locked, retwist. They they would like me to do it. I have to engage what's coming at me. And I have to educate myself in order to do that. Big six. Mass merchandisers, drugstores, grocery stores, Amazon, specialty beauty retailers like Beauty Supplies, Sally's, and so forth, department stores are fighting each other for a bigger slice of this pie. They are battling for it. I mean, tooth and nail, they buying up companies. They, hey, they know that this billion dollar, multi-billion dollar industry is more than three, almost three quarters of these consumers come to us first. It's like water just pouring through our fingers. It's we have them, and what are we are? What are we doing? He's sending them away. So I, I know, I know this. This is a it's a daunting task, I, and and I I will admit, you know, trying to figure out how and who and what um, to retail or to approach retail is a daunting task. And I don't I don't say it like I figured it out. I'm saying it like I am conscious to it now, and it is important that you all be conscious to it. You may start your own line, or you may pick a line to follow. You may, you know, buy some butters and oils, or whatever it is, take it serious. The senses, touch, smell, you know, uh, touch. Uh, that experience cannot be replicated. We, we own that, but we're not completing it. It's incomplete if we're not, like fragrance, for instance. Fragrance, smell, it, 
ignites or activates memory. You know, a smell can take you back to a place that you like, wow, you know, I remember when, you know. Um, when we have clients in our chair, we gotta, we gotta stimulate their senses, not just with the mirror, you know. That experience, like every time I get a haircut, I feel it. I, I know I know that feeling. It's nothing like it. those clippers. You know, after that, there's a refreshing moment. Like, you know, the smell, the touch, the sound, the sight. We got to get in tune with that again. Because at the, on the other side of it is customer retention. On the other side of it is longevity, career. You know, those are those are the byproducts of investing in that experience. And if we're not investing in that experience, in their senses, we're losing. In sales, just in services and goods, 2,163 sales in 2018. And again, that's just my credit card. Just swipes. 29%. My income went up 38% just in last year. But that 29% of my income came from retail sales. They said 30 or 30%. I'm right there and it's real. And I, I didn't even try. I didn't, I didn't sell the product. Shea butter sells itself. Jojoba oil sells itself. I just kept their senses stimulated. Man, what is that smell? And I I messed up a lot. I was making, you know, but they, some people like, some people did, but, but they didn't forget. They came back for the next experience. What you got today? <laughs> it surprised me, you know. The cut, the cut, they were confident. They were, they were inspired to experience. So retail gives you the opportunity to experience your service. That's an important part of growth as a professional. So, in closing, I just put this out here just so you will not forget. Retail is an extension of my customer service as a bar. Retail is an extension of my customer service as a bar. You gotta get that in your spirit. Retail is an extension. It ain't about the money. The money's gonna come. It's about your customer service. You are serving them better when you give them a complete experience.